far too long we've been told what to do, what to think, how to be. No more. The old paradigm is crumbling, falling all around us. Burn it all. It's my mission to bring you back to your natural state of luxury, to lead you to an empowered place with energetic intention. Luxury is a personal, expansive experience, one that's been kept from you, hidden away, a soul experience broken into a million pieces. Luxuriously fierce is for those who know there's more, who desire more, even if you don't know what more is. It's for those who are ready to burn old paradigms to the ground and walk through the flames to the other side. For those who are ready to be bold in their being, fierce in their feminine. Luxuriously Fierce is not just a brand, it's a movement. It's not something I do, it's something I am. Together, we are setting fire to the old and forging a new path. A new world. One where openness and truth are the norm. Where changing the world begins with healing yourself. If you're here on this earth, in this lifetime, to light a fire and burn everything you believe to be true to the ground. Welcome to my world. Burn it all and watch the ashes fly. Welcome back to the Luxuriously Fierce podcast. I am so excited today to have Bridget McCormack with me. Bridget is a somatic energy practitioner who believes that you have the power to heal within, and she's absolutely right about that. Bridget blends the ancient and modern healing techniques, guiding you along your journey as you integrate the wisdom of your body, mind, and soul for true healing. She is passionate about empowering women to free themselves from pain, return home to their true selves, and live the life they dream of living. Oh, I love that so much. Welcome to the show, Bridget. I'm so excited that you're here to share all of this amazing wisdom with us because this is something that I'm very passionate about and I know that my listeners are very passionate about. And this is really the way that the world is moving where we're empowering women, we're freeing ourselves from from our pain and from our trauma and from the boxes that we've been put in and we're coming home to ourselves and it's so beautiful. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here for sure. And yeah, I mean, this is just, it's really a dream come true of what I'm doing, the work that I'm doing right now, because it's something that I've personally like lived through and have worked through and continue to work through. Cause I don't think our work is ever done. I think it's, we just continue to grow and learn and blossom into who we truly are. And that's, that's our right to being here on this earth. Like we are a soul in a body and we are here for a purpose and our purpose, everybody's purpose is unique. Everybody's purpose is beautiful. And you should be able to live out that purpose and be exactly who you are every day, just as yourself. That is so beautiful. And I'm so excited that you're here to share all of this with us. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey and how you got from where you were to where you are now? Sure. I'd love to. So I am, let's see, where do I start? I'm a mom at heart. That is, you know, that's, that is, that was like the ultimate goal. And then to help others is, is, I don't want to, is in tandem with that. It's, you know, growing up as a kid, my mom used to say that I was going to be a nurse because I would be the first person to run to get a band-aid. Like the stray animals would follow me home from school, literally. And I would like be feeding them from my lunchbox. Like those people and animals are my two loves. They truly are. I was either going to be a veterinarian or a physical therapist. And I ended up being a physical therapist, but I have some of the dog part, the, the, the animal part's still there for me too. But so, and then, you know, I was sick a lot as a kid, allergies, migraines, anxiety. I think they all kind of played together as a lovely mix. And I was an athlete. I am an athlete. So 
and that you know that for me led to unfortunately injuries and um all those kind of fun things so the allergies, asthma, and the anxiety, really, it took me out of life. I was that kid. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Secret of the Nim, where the the one character is, it's a cartoon movie. It's like one of my favorites. I think from... I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever seen it. It sounds oh familiar, but. Yeah, it's very like woo-woo animal, like it's animated animals. But the one character, he can't go outside because he's sick. And the whole movie is about like trying to find Timmy help so he can get out. And that's how I felt as a kid. Like, well, you have a migraine, you have to stay in. Well, you have allergies and like you're sick so you have to stay in and both and I I hated it I'm a people person I wanted to be out there I wanted to be just with everyone and then you know as I started to move through that and my injuries from athletics started to kick in you know my internal person like I can't tell you how many times I sprained an ankle and I'm like we don't have to go to the ER like I know that like we like I'm like eight going like mom we're good like I don't need to go to the ER again but it really drove me to want to know like what was happening with my body and, and taking all these medicines that weren't really making me better and weren't really getting me where I wanted to go drove me to like want to know what was wrong with myself, like not wrong, but like find another way to feel like, and again, like I loved, I, I just love people. So like wanting to help others was always in there for me. And I, so as I started to think about school and profession and work, I volunteered at a vet hospital and that was, I guess the one that I volunteered at was very dry. And I was like, I don't know that I can do this like every day. So (laughs) I had been in PT many times as a patient and I'm like, this would be great. It's active. Like I'm with people. I understand where they've been. I know where they want, I, I can understand and empathize with where they want to go. And so that led me to physical therapy. And I chose Jefferson because when we went to schools, you know, they talked about treating the whole person, like seeing the whole body, like not just looking at you as like an ankle or a back or, you know, something like that. So I really respected that. It's what drove me to work through, you know, I didn't, I was not the, I wasn't gifted in the natural intelligence part. Like, so PT school was hard for me, like getting in and then just working through like four years of undergrad and, and continuing to work towards my dream of just going to Jefferson. Cause that's what I thought I was going to get, like seeing the whole body. And, you know, you go to school and they teach you how to be safe, which is what they have to do because they don't want you to hurt anybody and they want to give you the basics. And it was a wonderful schooling. It was awesome. I have nothing bad to say about it, but it again, left me wanting to know, like, what are the alternatives? Like, how do we like listen actively to this person that's in front of me? How do we you know, I'm a very, I'll back up and say, my faith has always been at my core. Like that has been a part of me my whole life, you know, given to me by both of my grandmothers, fostered by my parents. And so I wanted to know, like, how do I talk to this person's spirit? How do I see this person that's been through something traumatic, whether it's just, you know, they're out of their soccer game for a week or they've fallen down the stairs and they're out of work and they're, you know, in a lot of pain. How do I address all of those things? Not just the physical part, because, you know, we know that you can't, you're not going to get complete healing with just addressing the physical part. There's so many different layers. So through my own personal quest and my quest for my clients, I studied some meditation. I studied breath work. I was introduced to breath work and yoga through my aunt who like she understood the anxiety piece. And she was like, I, she, without giving it a word, which I think sometimes when we put a word on it, it carries that negative connotation or maybe some judgment or some self guilt or shame. So she gave it to me. She never called it anxiety. She just said like, let's, how about, what if we talk about some breath work? What if you come over and do some yoga with me? So it was a beautiful lesson of like how to, honor that person in front of you, like see what they're going through, but also honor them and give them the help they need without judgment. So that was also, that was like my first lesson there. And so between the breath work and the meditation, and then just to deal with the anxiety piece, because school's hard school and school is stressful and you're in your twenties and there's so many things. And, you know, in, in the back of my mind on top of like school, like I wanted to, I wanted a family. I wanted 
all of those things. So how to balance all of that. Like I met my husband at Jefferson. So we kind of knew we were where we were going that way. So just finding alternatives to manage that, not manage, but understand my, my anxiety, my stuff, and then being able to bring that to my clients was just awesome because it opened a whole new door for me and for them. And then from there, I just wanted more. So I learned cranio, I'm trained craniosacral therapist, which that is a light touch, a hands-on, but also can be done at a distance work technique where you're working with the energetics, like so I don't, we don't really talk about the energetics, so to speak, when you learn it, but you're working in the aura. I mean, you're working in those layers of your aura. You're also, so you can do it hands off, like I said, or you can do it hands on. And it's so light. It's the weight of a nickel on your body. So it's so gentle. And you're really tuning into that, to the, all three of those parts, like the, you're go, you're allowing that person with that gentle, neutral non-judgmental touch to drop into their body, to come out of their mind and the thought process and, and all of what's swirling around them and allow them to drop within into that inner landscape and be able to take a breath maybe even, you know, and, and just rest within their body. And we all know whether it's because you've received a hug from someone and you are able to settle back or you're receiving some of that body work or energy work care, or you're listening to a conversation when you're tuned up and that, that person's voice kind of brings you back down. We know what that feels like, right. To be back inside of our body. But a lot of times we don't get the opportunity to do that, or we don't give ourselves the opportunity. So craniosacral for me and somato emotional release was the second level of that, where we got to, to really address the emotional or energetic and mental and spiritual part of the person that's in front of you was just like, you know, when you're, you're watching a movie and the person like touches someone and like this flood of energy comes through and this, like this whole magical, like light bulb comes on, or it's this aura that bursts out of this person. That's what it was like for me, literally. Like the first time that I practiced this technique, it was like, OMG, like I have found answers to what I've been feeling and what I've been knowing. And like, so it was, it was a beautiful thing to be able to start integrating that a little bit. And then I, you know, from there it was learning about the Claire's and learning about aura and, you know, taking some Reiki. I'm, you know, Reiki two practitioner at this point in my journey. So just being able to integrate all of those things with my clients, like, it took their healing from, you know, just the body to like the whole person and being able to give them to actively listen to them and to, I mean, I thought I was a good listener until I like did some more work for myself and did some more of this work and really understood what an active listener is or, and how to just, you know, for somebody who you and I talked about this earlier, who's somebody who talks a lot to just know that sometimes you don't have to say anything, that just holding that space is enough for some people and that's all that they need. Or asking them an open-ended question that really helps them drop within and think about what's happening and get in touch with their self. Because that's what healing is about. It's not about us doing it for or to someone, it's about helping someone and guiding someone back to themselves so they can get in touch with their inner being, their inner healer, their highest self, so they know what they need to heal. We don't know what they need to heal. We can, we can, you know, take all of our training and do certainly a scientific evaluation and assessment of what's happening and what's going on and what may be best for them. And we can guide them through that. And for sure, I'm not saying like, I think what I do is a lot of spiritual science. So it's a combination of both. It's using that analytical mind, but also using that intuitive brain at the same time and merging those two together to just make this beautiful, complete package where you can see that person and help them get where they need to go. Not where I want them to go, but where they need and want to go. So the more I did that, the more I kind of wanted to do it my way and on my own. And because the medical system is beautiful. I had a wonderful boss who 
he was very encouraging and gave me the time and space where in a busy outpatient orthopedic clinic where you're scheduled three to four patients an hour, like to be able to do the work that I want to do, I made the time or he gave me the time to have an hour with somebody, which was awesome. But I just wanted to do it like my way. And finally, when the pandemic hit, I have two kids at the time they were fifth grade and second grade and everything was shut down. And, you know, there was a lot of pressure. My husband works full time too. And they were like, you know, you have five days in May. They said I was furloughed at first. Then May, they said, you have five days to come back to work, find babysitting in the middle of a pandemic for my two kids who were, you know, like what the heck is happening A virtual school? Like they needed some stability. And I said, you know what? I hear you, God. I am taking the leap. I hear I am. And I'm not going back. I am going to do this. This has been on my heart and my mind to do this and to be me and to, to share my gifts with, you know, other, with who I'm supposed to share them with in this way. So I had a mentor from Craniosacral who was taking her whole program and putting it online to teach about distance work. Cause I knew it could be done. Like I knew that it could be done at a distance. I knew all that stuff intuitively, but the how was kind of like, okay, how do I translate this physical work that I'm doing into distance work through the computer? And then I had a dear friend, Ilya Stranko of Spiritually Curious. She, I, she was already doing some distance work and in-person work. So I reached out to her and she at the time was like, why don't I just like support you, bring you on? Like, well, I'll help you. We'll mentor. So with those two pieces, I was like, okay, I'm doing it. Like I'm, I'm taking a jump, taking a leap. And so for, from 2020 until like last year, a little bit last year, I was just, you know, doing this work, putting it out there, learning more about how to make it translate for me and for others. And then in November, I decided I needed to own this. I needed to do it like solo. I need to just step out and just own it. And so here I am. I am. Here you are. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> I love all of that. There's so, this is why I love hearing people's stories. Everyone's story is so unique. It's unique to them. It's personal to them. And yet stories are the thing that connect all of us. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love mm -hmm. hearing people's stories because there's so much in them. There's so much in them. And in saying that, there are so many things that I, that it, when I always open the podcast this way and by getting someone to tell, you know, their story and now, and this happens every time, but there are so many roads in front of me now, <laughs> so many paths <laughs> of conversation that I could take. And I always, this is my thing, because like you said, us talkers, we, <laughs> we can do it. We, the talking we're good at, the listening is learning to hold that space is a little bit trickier, but I think we've both, we've both mastered that. But it's funny that you, the thing, one of the biggest things that you said that stood out to me was that they know, people know mm -hmm. what they need. People mm -hmm. know what's right for them. People mm -hmm. know their bodies. They know their energy. And it's really funny that you said that because this morning, before we hopped on here, I was like really pissed off about this TV show that I watched last night. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I, there's like, there are very few shows that I sit down and watch, but there's one that I watch. And, you know, it's dramatic. It's, it's a drama show, right? But in the show, in the episode last night, there was a woman on the show kind of in medical distress, I guess. Mm -hmm. And she was very, you know, painted. And of course, it's all like actors and actresses. And, you know, the whole thing is scripted to be super dramatic which I, I struggle with in with the duality of that because I, I love it. It's, it is very like engaging and enticing, but also part of the reason our world is the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, there's the, Truth. it's, it's a, yeah, there's a juggling act there, but the woman on the show was in distress and she was painted as this very like irrational 
person Mm. hysterical like yelling and screaming at her husband and you know and I was just I was sitting there going yeah of of course she's freaking out because nobody's fucking listening to her first of all yeah she's telling you what she wants she's telling you what she believes to be true for her she's telling Mm -hmm. you what it is that she needs and you're telling her that she's wrong and then, yeah. you know, of, of course, in, in the drama scheme of the show, she dies at the end of the show. Spoiler alert. I didn't even tell you what show it is, so it's not even a spoiler alert. She dies at the end of the episode. And then, of course, there's this really sad moment at, at the end where the doctor is speaking with her husband. And he says to the doctor, she wasn't always like this. I went away for a month for work. And when I came back, she was deep in the conspiracy theory. And I was fuming about this this morning. <laughs> so it's really funny that you say this because I, can see I, was, that. I was sitting there thinking about, like, thinking right before we hopped on here, thinking about how, like, that woman was painted, and not just on this show, but, like, women in general are painted as overly emotional, overly sensitive, you know, overly this, overly that, you know, hysterical, irrational, as people that can't contain themselves and, like, don't know what's best for themselves. And then at the end she's basically labeled a conspiracy theorist and I was fuming and I was like this was just like a few minutes before we hopped up uh, hopped on here and I was like about to write a big post about it because I was so (laughs) but I'm like it's not a conspiracy theory to know what you want it's not a conspiracy theory to know yourself it's Mm -hmm. not a conspiracy theory to want to know more about yourself because we are so taught about the physical and so hell-bent on treating the physical and yeah you know obviously there's room for treatment and you know intervention there when necessary but like you're saying mm-hmm. we're whole beings it's not a conspiracy theory to know what you're know yourself it's not a conspiracy theory to share what you believe to be true for you yeah i agree i totally agree and i think in our society and and just generationally, we are taught who to be mm-hmm. and how to, how be. to be. And w- there's not a lot of latitude. Like I'm so grateful as an individual to have been surrounded by people that have allowed me at different times in my life to be me and to figure out what that means. And I'm even more grateful to have been blessed with teachers and like people that are coming out now teaching us as adults and as and how to raise our children in a way that allows them to explore who they are and respect where they are Mm -hmm. and respect where we are in our growth and our path because you're right like there's we're all individuals and no one is the same and so unless we're allowed to explore within ourselves who we think we are and who we want to be and allow ourselves to express that then we're all just going to be these little cookie cutter you know robots i guess and and that's not who we're meant to yeah and that's not who we're meant to be and you know when when our when this woman was like yelling on this tv show and she's screaming at the doctor and her husband it's because she's been, she's either in, you know, the, what I was thinking about when you were saying that is that, you know, our body, our spirit, our inner being is telling us in whispers, like, Mm -hmm. this is what you need this. I mean, simply put, it it comes down to like, when you're hungry, your body, like you either get a picture of food or you smell something and go, Ooh, I'm hungry. Or you get a rumbling in your stomach or you feel tired or, Like you get all these sensations from your inner self that says, I'm hungry. And I say that because everybody knows what it feels like to be Mm -hmm. hungry, right? Sounds Um, relatable example of (laughs) what we're talking about. Yeah. But like that woman was like, I'm screaming because no one has been listening to me and my body has been telling me this is what I need. And I think too, on the other side of that, we're not taught like in... I'll just speak to the medical profession. We're not, we're taught to like follow a system, keep everybody safe. We're not taught to use our intuition. It's mm-hmm. in this 
like this Western medicine, we're not taught to use that part of us. And it's so lost because science is a practice. And when science doesn't work, when what we know is our system or our method doesn't work, then what happens? A miracle, right? Like a miracle happens. Or there's somebody that does listen to their intuition or their patient that's in front of them or the client that's in front of them and goes with it. And then healing happens. Or maybe they do pass on, but maybe that's what their body needed. Maybe their body needed that last bit of energy because that was their journey. That was their next step, you know? So it could go, it could go either way, but you're so right. There's, you know, we are not taught to be who we are. We are, there's not a lot of like, you know, there's, are you going to be a doctor? Are you going to be a nurse? Are you going to be a teacher? Are you going to be a, there's not like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like there is when you're two or you're four and it's like, oh, that's so cute. They want to be a firefighter. Yeah, it's cute they when you answer be... something like, I'm going to be Superman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, and you know what? Yeah, you are. Like maybe you are. Mm-hmm. What, what is your definition of Superman? Like that, that would be my speaking question. The truth. Yeah. Like su- Superman can be any, like heroes don't wear capes, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are a lot of heroes that don't wear capes. And to be able to hold space for somebody and allow them to per, allow them to have the permission to give themselves permission to drop inside and say, Hey, what do I need? Like what? And that was, you know, for me on my journey during like, you know, I went through a period of time where I had the GI, like my stomach, my GI system just went like, It went offline, we'll say. And I had one doctor saying it was this and do this. One doctor saying it was this and do this. And again, I loved both of these doctors and this is how they're trained. And they were doing exactly what they knew how to do for my best interest with what they had in front of them. So we're all doing the best that we can with what we have and what we know. I totally and firmly believe that. And there was some of this and this that I needed to do, but there was also a lot of like this Mm -hmm. and this and this so i'm and like she's touching yeah. her third eye and her crown chakra is this and this <laughs> yeah 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 so there's like the, the intuitive the spiritual work i needed mm-hmm. to do there was like there was a lot of other things that i needed to do to really drop in and and hear like no i don't need this test no it's really not this it's this but i also need to work on you know, stress reduction. I need to get out of this unhealthy situation that I'm in for me, which was really hard, but was like, I'll tell you walking, dropping in and knowing that taking the steps to do that. And I didn't have this, have the space that I would have loved to have had. I didn't have the total support that I would have Mm -hmm. loved to have had to say like, no, I need a change here. Like I, and So going through that without the support really even cemented further that like, this is what I want to do. I want to give somebody what I would have loved to have had as like a kid growing up with all these illnesses as a a teen into like college age with anxiety that was undiagnosed. And maybe it's a heart issue. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Or, you know, then as an adult having to make this huge step forward that at least what felt like, but then when I stepped out of that and feeling the weight that I had carried unknowingly because of all the, this is what you should do. You should just Mm -hmm. keep doing this. This is who you are. This is what you need to do. This is what this definition of you is. It was like, I cannot believe I carried that weight. And no wonder I was so sick, like, because I was carrying all of this stuff. So you know, being, it's a beautiful gift to receive. And I'll say I've received it. Like, I, and mm-hmm. that's like all that I do going out there, putting out there is something that I've received because I feel so blessed that I w- just want to give it to somebody else. Like I want to share it with someone else, but yeah, to be able to hold space for somebody and just allow them to drop into their inner landscape and say like, I need this physically. I need this mentally. I need this spiritually. I need to understand what this emotion is that keeps coming up or just realize that it's an emotional process that's keep coming up that, you know, we don't realize this, but our organs and our tissue hold emotions. It's what they're designed to do on a spiritual and energetic level. They are, you know, we're surrounded by energy, right? Like 
it's how we're having this conversation, you know, across the airwaves. It's the light that brings, you know, allows us to see each other on the screen and it's passing through us and our, and it's, you know, the, the giddiness that we feel when we're talking to each other right now and connecting and we take that in and our bodies process that. And sometimes that energy gets stuck because it's associated with a traumatic event or we don't know what to do with it or we're just so stressed overwhelmed and outside of ourselves that we our body can't handle it it can only process so much so then it walls it off and then that's where our system because we are humans and we are the way we are the, the whole way we experience life is through this human body right is our body starts talking to us and sending us signals and that's kind of where you know when you're not sure what that means that's where i come in and that's where i can hold that space for you and take all of the knowledge that i've gathered whether it's personal experience or professional experience and take all of my tools and just hold that space and allow whatever you need to come through and then whatever tool whatever skill you need me to use we can use to kind of work through what's coming up for you, whether it's in your physical body or your emotional body or your mental body or spiritual body, and then allow you to, you know, with it so that you can get back to being who you are and not who you're told to be or what you were carrying for all what your path has been up until this moment. I love that. And what we're really speaking to here is the marrying of the physical and the auric and energetic, the spiritual and the emotional and the cognitive and like all of these bodies and these auras, these energies that we have. And even the thing that just came through for me as you're speaking right now is like we don't know ourselves when you said who we're told to be what just connected for me is even you know as we were talking about like the in the medical field sort of thing we don't even know who we are physically right like we're so out of touch with ourselves because we're always told what to do and what to think and how to be that we don't know when we're in pain you know i had someone on the podcast a few weeks ago and we were talking about, she's an intuitive dietitian. And so we were talking about hunger cues, which is something you brought up earlier. And some, like, so many people are so out of touch with their body that mm-hmm. they don't even recognize the physical hunger cue. Like, my stomach is growling. Yeah. Um, or, you know, I smell this food and, oh, I'm hungry. You mm-hmm. know, we're so, we're so told, we're so bogged down with being told what to do. Yeah. And, and there's there's so much information out there too. Right. Mm-hmm. And how to navigate all that, like the talking about the, and everything. Yes. It's, yes. It's yes. And there's, there's so much there's yeah. And there's so much division too, in that mm-hmm. duality where, you know, even, even in the, like you were talking about eating and that intuitive piece of eating, like, you know, three meals a day, Oh no, it's six meals a day. Oh no, you mm-hmm. should be this, this, and this. And I went through that with my own, you know, on my own journey. But really, it's like we're all on. Ex- my husband once said, "We're all we're all an experiment of one," and it's so true. Ooh. Like I go back to that all the time. Like we are all a unique snowflake. I love that too. And we are, as it's snowing out here, and we are all an experiment of one. So we can listen, and you know, and. Fortunately and unfortunately, there's so much, we're, we're bombarded by information, Mm -hmm. right? And so how do you navigate all of that? How do you stay within yourself and stay true to who you are if you don't know, Mm -hmm. or if you don't feel like you can explore, or if there's again, that duality and that division where we need both the masculine and feminine, we need yin and yang, we need the emotional body and the physical body to be one, to be who we are inside. So you're so right, like just figuring out who we are and just having, I'll go back to that permission, just permission to to say like, thank you for this information. I'm gonna go home 
and think about it, or I'm going to just decide whether that's good for me or not. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, no disrespect, it's just not good for me. Like there's, there's nothing attached to that other than it's not mine to do. It's not mine, my path to walk. I love that. I love what you said about giving people what they, what you didn't have. Giving people what you didn't have, the support, the space. And I think that that's something that we all relate to. You know, none of us were given that support or that space and that's nobody's fault. It's the way of the world and it's a generational thing that's been passed down for so many years, for so many lifetimes. And the world is really shifting into this new paradigm where we're opening up ourselves to ourselves, first off, Mm -hmm. but also to other people and honoring where people are honoring where they are on their personal path and you know learning to be okay with someone not being on the same path as us learning to be okay with the duality of the world and just opening up ourselves to be that support system for other people whether or not they're on that same path as us you know, it, it's about Perfect. compassion and empathy and perspective, mm-hmm. you know, being able to see someone else's side of things, you know, see what they're moving through from their eyes and from their perspective mm-hmm. and honoring that while still walking your own path. And I think there's so much, there's so much unbuckling that needs to be done in the world mm-hmm. where we we buckle ourselves to other people and we say, you know, they're on this path and I'm on this path, but I don't want to be on a separate path from this person. And so we buckle ourselves to them and we walk on their path with them, even though we know that it's not our path and it's not the path mm-hmm. that we want to be on. And now we're moving to towards this kind of unbuckling where we can walk on two different paths side by side but still hold our own. And I love that you were speaking about, you know, giving someone what you didn't have, because that is, that's the core of any of this work, any of the energetic work, you know, the spiritual, the auric, that this kind of work that we're ever, like we, we do. And this kind of world that we're moving into is giving people that support that we didn't have. And it's a really beautiful thing. And I love it because it keeps people in integrity. And I've been having a lot of conversations around integrity lately. There is a lot, you know, a big lack of integrity in the world. And I think particularly in this space, in this online space, and especially in the last couple of years where people have moved into the online space at an incredibly rapid rate, you know, with the belief that I can work online and I can make a lot of money. And that's the sole purpose. Mm -hmm. That's their purpose of, you know, being in this space. But, you know, that's not an integrity with the, the world that we're moving into. And it's, it's not an integrity with your being either. If someone were to come to you and they're, you know, telling you their story, they're sharing with you from their soul and they're sharing with you their experiences and they ask you how do I move forward how do I continue on this path without you know buckling myself to someone else without falling off the path and I will tell you right now, you will always fall off the path. The trick is getting mm-hmm. back on it. <laughs> but if someone were to come to you and just and say, this is, this is what I'm desiring. This is what I'm moving toward. What do I do? How do I do that? Where do I start? How do I free myself from this pain? How do I connect with my energetic body? How do I come home to myself? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. So what I would, what we would, what I would suggest is that we, you know, we enter, 
let's say this is a curiosity call, which is like a free, you know, call, com just a consult call with me. I would suggest we do, you know, a session. And in a session, what happens is, you know, I cr we create this safe, neutral space. You in your favorite space in your house or wherever that is. Maybe it's not in your house. Maybe it's outside. I mean, we can take technology anywhere. So if it's, you know, wherever you feel comfortable. And I create that energetically in having my own safe, neutral boundaries, you know, coming to you with a curious, open mind, one that has no agenda, one that is here just for you to be able to discover those next steps. And then, you know, within that session, we would ground, we would drop into like a meditation almost, you know, we would drop, we would use our breath to drop inside, to allow you to drop into your body and connect with your inner being. And when I say your inner being, I'm really talking about you truly connecting to your highest self, right? Your, that inner knowing that talks to you throughout the day and helps you make decisions that are aligned with your highest good, with what you desire and what is your purpose on this earth. And we first start doing that by just grounding into the universal energy. We are here on this planet connected to mother earth. She grounds us. She keeps us here. If it wasn't for her, like let's bring the science in here. If it wasn't for her and gravity, we wouldn't be walking right on the earth. Mm -hmm. So that you know, and then there's the woo part of that, where that universal energy is flowing through that through us and it's loving and nurturing and it's, there's no agenda there. It's just there for you to do what you need to do with it throughout your day. So we would connect into that energetic field to allow you to release any surface tension, anything that is preventing you, whether it's thoughts or emotions or physical tension that's on the surface that you no longer need in that moment. So you can truly drop into yourself and fill up with this universal energy. Again, connecting into your body in a way that allows you to notice your stomach rumbling or your heartbeat or your, where your breath enters, where you notice your breath entering into your body, allow you to become aware of your feet and legs, of your pelvis, of your, you know, of your connection between your arms and your heart, because they are an extension of our heart center, allow you to become aware of all of the inner workings of your face and your brain and the fluid there and the nourishment and all the way up to your crown, which is where you connect with spirit, right? You connect with the universal energy above and whatever your higher power is, you know, and once we're full of that energetic, within that energetic container, I will ask you, I will, you know, ask you where you want to start. Like if you're coming and you're saying like, how do I transform this pain? I'll ask you before we start, do you have an idea of where you want to start today? And if you have an idea, that's wonderful. If you don't have an idea, that's okay too. Cause as we fill with that energy, you're, and you connect into your body, letting it know that you're listening it will show you where to begin. It will say, May, today, I want to begin in my stomach, in my gut. And I want, there's something there I need you to know. There's something there I want to say to you. And so we'll go there and we'll hold that. If with your permission, I will hold that space. You can, you can physically or energetically hold that space. We'll drop in there and we'll ask that space, just how does it feel? to be held here? How does it feel to know that I, that we, that you are here, that you're listening, that you are being held with this unconditional loving presence and are ready to hear whatever you need to hear. And the beautiful thing about this process is your body knows exactly what you're ready to work on. So if you're afraid of like, oh, something will come up and it'll be icky and it'll be scary and it'll be, things will come up and they may not be what you exactly want to hear. Cause we, you know, in order to grow, we do kind of sometimes need to hear things that we don't want to hear. 
but your body, spirit, and mind know what you can handle in that moment. They are there to protect you and to be, to show you what you need to hear. And they know what you and I are meant to work on together. So there will not, it won't be something big and traumatic that you're not ready for in that moment. And so as we hold this area, you said to me, here's where I want to go. How do I get there? We'll ask that question. We'll either ask, you know, you, I'll, I'll say to you, I might say to you, May, what do you think about asking, is this where I want to go? And you'll say, no, I don't like that question. Or you'll say, yeah, I think that's good. So you'll drop into that area. We'll hold that space together and ask, do I want to be Superman? You know, from what we said earlier. And we'll see what comes up in that moment. And it could be another physical sensation. It could be a color. It could be a word. It could be yes, like a big fat yes. Or it could be you know, an energetic sensation that tells you that it's yes or no, but your body will give you an answer. And we'll go from there, open, asking open-ended questions that keep you, no, I don't want to say, use the word keep, but I will continue to guide you to your inner landscape, to your highest self. And, and by your answers and what I, so what happens for me too, on my end is that I will get sensations. I will, I, my clairs are, my two strongest clairs are clair cognizance. So for people that don't know what clairs are, it's kind of like our extra special senses, right? So I will get clair cognizance is like a deeper inner knowing. So I will get words. I will just get like belly or read or sometimes I'll get like sentences, but I will. So as we go down through the body, I'll get, and my second one is clairsentience. So that's just physical sensations. I will feel physical, like what you're feeling on some level. And I can ask myself, is this mine or is this maze? And I would, you know, get an answer for me. Like, no, this is yours. This is hard. Like, and so, but I'll also respect if I feel two different areas and I'll say, where do you want to start? And you say one and I get two different ones. I'll get the same, but like say, say I get heart and stomach and you say stomach, we respect your body and we start where you want to start and we go from there. So there'll be, you know, you will ask those questions. I will help guide. If you're asked, if your body needs some healing hands, I can do that at a distance. We can energetically put like my, I can put my hands where you say you would like them and we can do some healing work on that energetic level. There are, I operate on the six wisdom areas of the body. So they vary. It's amazing how all, there's all these different systems. So I know the Reiki chakras. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with traditional Chinese medicine and the organ system, you know, obviously the physical therapy knowledge and the craniosacral system. And then there's six energetic wisdom areas of the body. And so I can use any of those systems, like whatever's coming up that, because we also, our bodies communicate in different languages, right? Just like we have different languages around the world, your body may want to work in the chakra system. Somebody else might want to work in these six wisdom areas. Somebody else might just simply want to work in the physical plane and work on, you know, the physical areas of the body. So whatever shows up for you, we can work on and we can work with that. So at the end of our, so throughout the session, you'll get some answers to those questions, whatever questions are coming up for you. And they'll be your answers because they're coming from inside of you. You asked me, you said, if you, in the beginning of the session, if someone came to you and said, this is what I desire, how do I get there? Well, I mean, I can tell you what I think you could do to get there. But that's what I think you should do. And that may not resonate with you. And that may be helpful because you may hear what I'm saying and go, no, that's not for me. So that might be helpful. But I think there's so much more wisdom in understanding and knowing what is aligned with you and what you think, what your inner being and your person, your highest self knows is your next step even if it's a tiny step forward, even if it's just like B1, 
being in this session and allowing yourself to drop into your body. That might be a huge step for you. And that's beautiful because that's your step. And that's, you know, we honored, we'll honor that. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you per se how to get there because that's not going to help you. I mean, that it, that's it where purpose you, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, totally. I mean, you talked about how do I unbuckle, right? I love that. I love that imagery of buckling yourself to someone because I've been there and like unbuckling is so freeing, right? And unbuckling and knowing that you'll still be able to walk side by side mm -hmm. with that person because you've trusted your intuition, you've honored yourself. And in honoring yourself, you're honoring that other person too, because maybe being buckled to that person is stressful for them, but they don't know that. And so when you unbuckle, you see your whole world expand. They feel lighter, you feel lighter, you both can walk together down your individual paths, but together mm -hmm. at the same time, if that makes sense. It does. Um, it comes back to the stories. Like I was saying earlier, everyone's story is so unique, right? Your path is unique. Your story is unique, but yet it's the thing that connects us. Absolutely. So we'll find out what you need, what the answers are, what your answers are to those questions. We'll do some healing work if that's what your body is asking for. And then at the end, we'll, we'll continue to stay in that container and ask what resources does may need what you'll ask we'll ask together whatever you feel comfortable what resources do i need and we'll just see what comes up like and i can also make suggestions based on what we've talked about in our history what you've told me like you love journaling so it might be like i want to go and journal this afterwards or i want to do kundalini afterwards or i want to go walk afterwards like whatever comes up we'll honor that too and so, you know, I'll encourage everyone to have something to, it doesn't have to be a journal. I say a journal because it's nice to have that, you know, written down in, in somewhere, but even if it's just a piece of paper to write down what your highest self says are the resources to continue the process, whether it's, you know, you say, thank you for this session. I got a lot out of it or I didn't. And, you know, these are my resources though. And I'm going to go like, cause it could be that, you know, it's a next session. It could also be that, I need to see an acupuncturist. I need to see a chiropractor. I need to have energy work done in a different way. And that's okay, because if that's your process, I'm happy to have connected you to your next step or helped you, guided you to that next step for you. And it could also be, you know, I need to do this and this. Like I need to, because again, in talking about our systems, we oftentimes, need to address it from different angles. We need to honor that we might need some medical care and we need that physical system. Like we need that science system. We also need to do the energetic work or we need to do the, you know, whatever else it may be, talk therapy or some exercise or some nutritional therapy, like whatever it may be, but your body knows what you need. Your mind, your body, mind, and soul know what that next step is. Sometimes it's just, and I'll say from experience, I have all these tools, but sometimes I need that space. I need someone to hold that space for me so I can drop in clearly and know what I need for my next step. You know, like I'm a talker, so I'll talk it all out. <laughs> but sometimes I need someone to hold space for me so I can drop in and, and just go, okay, there's so much help me stay, get centered and know what my next step is too. So I hope that answers your. <laughs> I think that's so, question. that's so beautiful. And I, I Thank love it, that what you just said about needing your own space and needing at times to connect with someone else so that they can hold space for you so that you can fully drop in and be present with yourself. Cause we were speaking earlier and I can't remember if, if this was before we started recording this podcast or if it was <laughs> a part of the podcast, but we were speaking earlier and talking about how this, this work, the healing, the shadow work, the, you know, the learning about your energy. And there's so, there's so many different modalities, things to learn about learning to connect with yourself. This work is never done, right? Because we're always mm -hmm. changing. We're always growing. We're always evolving. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a really common misbelief that once you sort of enter this this world, this more spiritual side of the world, that you're done. Mm -hmm. Like you've gone through your spiritual awakening, you've learned, you know, this thing and that thing and this other thing, and that's it, you're good. <laughs> and 
it's just no. not the way it is. Right? No. And there's there's so much power and also integrity, but so much power and empowerment in letting other people holding space for you continuously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? And, not, and just because you're, you know, you're a mentor and you're guiding people through these their personal experiences and they're guiding them on their personal journey to this empowered place doesn't mean that you don't need that for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and, and that's how, you know, for me, it's, again, you heard this earlier. It's how I got here doing this work for myself and for others. It's how I keep my, how I grow my language. You know, it's how I grow Mm -hmm. my communication skills with, with the person that's in front of me. It's how I am. I am. It makes me a better guide, mentor, healer, whatever word you, you want to use. Cause I'm not quite sure what your word I want to use yet, but whatever word you want to use, like it makes me better as it just as a human being, let's just put mm-hmm. that out there. It makes me a better human on this planet. I've seen, you know, the, the more I shift, the more I see the people around me that, that love me and that I love shift, but for good, like which is just awesome to see them grow and be able to be more vulnerable and be able to be themselves and be able to drop in and, and us work through things. And yeah, I mean, we're, we are never done. I mean, it's, it's all of my, all the mentors that I love, trust and respect have always said, do your own work, Mm -hmm. do your own work, do your own work, do your own work. And it's because if you're not giving yourself permission to, if you're not loving yourself and doing that self-love and doing that work, then, well, and let me put it this way instead, when you do that work for yourself and you put your, you know, you've been through the process and you put yourself, you put that energy out into the world, if there's a ripple effect, Mm -hmm. like, so you're doing your work and that helps the collective. And when it makes you a better human. It helps the person that's in front of you that you're helping. And then it ripples out. And, and I have, I'm a firm believer in that. I feel like that's how this, we're going to heal this. Not heal. We, yeah, there's a lot of healing to be done. There's a lot of healing to do. <laughs> there's a lot of healing to be done. And, and if, if that's, if me doing my work or me helping someone else do theirs helps the world, then that's what I'm here to do. I mean, that's, we're not just here to, be in the singular like Brene Brown says we are all wired for community and we are all here to be part of community and that resonates with me so much just as a people person but like we're here to make sure that we all have the world that we want that we all can be who we want to be and part of that is doing the work and allowing somebody else to hold space for you and to realize that it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it is totally okay to not be okay. Yeah. One of my favorite things to say is a powerful collective is made up of powerful individuals. Yes. And you can't, you know, you can't share your power and you can't, you know, you don't have that ripple effect if you're not doing the work yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just don't, it's just not there. Yeah. It simply isn't. It goes back to that word of integrity, right? Absolutely. You can't guide someone on a journey you haven't been on. Yes. It just doesn't work. Yes. It doesn't work. And if you're not doing the work yourself, you know, for yourself and for your, you know, community, for your family, for your friends, for whatever ripple effect you have outwardly, if you're not doing this work, then you're not growing and you're not expanding and you're not flowing. Right. If Mm -hmm. you're not doing the work for yourself, then your energy becomes stagnant, which is not what we want at all. No, no. And I think it's so it's so funny. And anyone that anyone that I have these kinds of conversations with, we always agree. So I hope that you'll agree as well. (laughs) But (laughs) once you start into this work and you start, you know, learning about your energy and the aura and all these things and all these different like bodies of yourself, it's so addicting. Mm -hmm. And at first very overwhelming because you want to learn all the things, but then, you know, you learn one thing and then you want to learn the next and you learn the next. And there, 
there comes a point where, you know, something happens if, you know, a, a, a trigger comes up or there's a fear response or something, something like, like that sort of shadow comes up. You get to the point where you look at it and you're like, I'm not afraid of you. What are you here to teach me? Can you just get yes. like, let's just do this thing, <laughs> right? And you get excited at the prospect yes. of expansion. You get excited yeah. at the prospect of learning something new about yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, it goes when you were talking before, that's what I was thinking. Like we go back to this whole point of being ourselves and how do we know who we are by doing the work and the work. and being able and allowing yourself to do it, whether it's on your own or with somebody that you feel safe enough to be vulnerable with and allow yourself to go to the places you need to go to do the work that you need to do. And it's a very beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tumultuous journey <laughs> at times. <laughs> You know, there's, no, there's no denying that and you just can't get around <laughs> yes. it. No. But it's so, no. un, there's, there really aren't any, any words for it. No, like, it's true. I could list all the words, you know, empowering, powerful, inspiring, you know, I could tell you how much it has opened up, you know, my heart and my empathy and my compassion and my ability to, you know, see other people's perspectives and you know, communication and trust, you know, all, all of the things, like literally everything. And they're just, there's not a word to encompass the power of, of this work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think about, you know, some, I, somebody brought this to my attention. I don't know what I was, I forget where I heard it, but it's, I love nature. And so it's this thought of, you know, the seed being in the dirt, right. And this, this beautiful seed like if you were planting it, you know what it's going to become, but if you don't, and it's under the dirt, it's in the dark, right? Which is sometimes what that journey, this journey feels like you're either in the dark because of the unknown or you're in the dark because you're in your, that's where you are emotionally, physically, spiritually, but this seed, you know, gets nourished and it get from the soil, from the water, from, you know, the food that's getting down to it. And then it just slowly over time, when it's ready, it starts to break the shell, which again, imagine it's just this seed that's under all this weight of dirt and it's pushing through this outer shell. It's held it for so long. And then it's working through six, four, two inches of dirt, which for a seed is a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it pushes and pushes and takes its time and it takes its nourishment and maybe it pauses along the way and that's okay to just like take a break and rejuvenate itself. And then it continues to push through and then eventually it becomes this beautiful 10 foot sunflower plant that is just amazing that it came from this tiny, 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 tiny little seed. But that's what our journey is all about, right? It, it's, it's about making the start, realizing that it's okay to be in the dark because that's where you, sometimes you need to be. You need, and maybe it's not that you're in the dark because it's a sad or a lonely place. You're just there because you're snuggled up and you're comforted and you're nourished and you're warm. And that's where you're supposed to land in that moment. And you're working towards being this standing tall, beautiful radiance, flower that not only brings you joy because you've gone through this journey and you've become but you're also bringing others joy and then your journey continues because eventually the seed the plant the flower becomes seed and the seeds the cycle starts all over again I love so. that oh that's so <laughs> cute I love it you know without the shell without the the darkness of the soil without the growth there's no sunflower yeah and you know different plants have you know different take different lengths of time yeah. to grow right yeah and they produce different fruit and they have different functions and they support different wildlife and insects and 
and that's who we are, right? They all have a different purpose. We all have a different purpose, we all have different purpose. but we're all beautiful and we're all necessary and we're all like necessary is a terrible word, but we're all, <laughs> we're all part of the collective. We're all part of the collective. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Thank you. This feels complete. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a beautiful way to end. Yeah. I love it. For anybody who is listening and they're like, I need to work with Bridget. Where do they go? How do they find you? The easiest, well, if you're on, if you're on Instagram, you can find me at I am Bridget McCormack. And if you go there, I have a link to my milkshake page, which is serving as my website right now. So you can click there and you can find me there. You can always, you can email me. I'm happy to give my email and you can, you can email me at bmccormack29 at gmail and find me there too. But those are probably the two easiest places to find me right now. I'm working on a bigger website, but that's for a later date that's later coming date. soon yes part of the expansion process <laughs> yeah part of the expansion yeah for sure <laughs> okay i have one last question for you i ask all my guests yes what does luxuriously fierce mean to you oh i've been thinking about this luxuriously fierce means totally being yourself exactly and unabashedly as you are it means and whether that's one day showing up in joggers and a comfy t-shirt that and a baseball cap that makes you feel like you and you're rocking it and that's your style and you're and that's who you are and the next day you are wearing heels and this kick-ass dress and you are just feeling awesome because that's also who you are it is having the grace and the confidence and whatever else you need to just be you and in all your forms again like you know be the mom be the kick-ass entrepreneur be you know whoever you want to be in this world and whether that's being joyful one day or you know having to do repair work because you said something that you maybe shouldn't have said it's all part of the journey and it's all part of being luxuriously fierce because you know who you are and you're not afraid to be. I love that. Having the grace and confidence to be who you are. Oh, that's it. It's my, it's my motto. It's my life journey. That's it. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having Absolutely me. Absolutely amazing is... and so much fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ditto. Totally. Totally fun. I loved it. I, a beautiful conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you loved this episode or know someone who would, share it and show some love. Screenshot the episode in the app. Share it to your Instagram stories along with your favorite fierce moment from the episode. And don't forget to tag me at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. You can also subscribe, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast and at Luxuriously Fierce underscore. Thank you for listening to today's episode and don't forget to tune in next week for more things Luxuriously Fierce. The Luxuriously Fierce Podcast is sponsored by Goddess Support, an oracular online business management company providing you high-level intentional support so you can be the creative and visionary in your business. Goddess Support goes the distance that traditional business coaching doesn't. Imagine having a turnkey team of goddesses that have your back with everything from strategy to implementation. That's what's possible with Goddess Support. We exist to serve the goddess that is you, and we are honored to help fulfill your big vision. Learn more at goddess.support or find us on Instagram at goddess.support.